So the folks at Blender Foundation have just announced that Blender 4.5, the beta, is available for anyone that would like to download and test it. And this is a beautiful time for artists and also creators to download this version of Blender and test it out for bugs and report these bugs to developers to help make Blender better. And for those who like to take a look at this, possibly you like to download this, all you need to do is go over to blender.org, go over to the download section, and you can simply scroll all the way down and click on download Blender Experimental. And this is going to bring you right here where you can download Blender 4.5 to beta for both Windows, Mac and Linux. And one thing you'd also notice is Blender 5.0 has just entered alpha and we're going to talk more about Blender 5.0 when we get to see some interesting updates come to it. The final version of Blender 4.5 is slated to be released on the 15th of July 2025 with a pre-release coming on the 9th of July of 2025. And of course for those who like to download these and see some of the cool features that are now available, you can go ahead, grab these and start exploring with it. And with that said, let's take a look at some of the cool features and interesting updates that are now available with Blender 4.5 to beta. So Blender 4.5 the beta opened up right here, you would notice that we've got a wonderful splash screen. All shout out to the folks at Blender Studio as this is one of the several projects that they're currently working on. This is more like a game which I believe they're building in Godot. Of course there's still some very interesting project that you might want to find out and we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. For now, let's talk about the user interface and see some of the cool things that you can now do with Blender 4.5 the beta. So once you take a look at the user interface, you would notice that there is no huge update to the user interface at this point, except for the naming that you just simply find around. However, there are tiny updates here and there, which I think might come in pretty handy, which contributes to quality of life when it has to do with how you get to interact with Blender and create with it. So when it comes to interaction, one of the noticeable things is this. If you do work with a mouse that has several scrolling types, for example, the MX Master, you would notice that the vertical scroll is now available. So for example, within the timeline, we can now use the vertical scroll to scroll left and scroll right, instead of using the middle mouse button to scroll from the middle all the way out. Another place you might find this very useful is in tight corners like this. Say for example, we like to scroll to a certain path, you can use that to perform that vertical scroll. Something else which is also impressive is right here within the properties section, you can now choose what you would like to have in sync with the properties. And this includes all of these buttons that we can turn on and turn off. So you can choose to turn on or turn off the render, the output, the view layer, scene, world, collection, object, and so on. And this makes it a bit more easier for you to be able to customize the property section and focus on what matters. And when you get to save your files now, once you click on the file button and initiate a save of your project, there's now a difference between when you save, save as, save as a copy, and also save incremental. All of these now have a message which actually specify exactly what the action is rather than just having it as saved by default. There's also this very interesting update that has to do with the sidebar. So for example, if you have any of these items selected, and this will be super useful for those that have tons of add-ons. So if you've got one of these selected, and for example, you scroll down, instead of scrolling all the way back up to find the add-on that you're actively working with, you can now press the period key to reveal that. So for example, for working with the view and we simply go all the way to item and we'll simply lost track of the active sidebar that we've selected. If we press the period button, this automatically pops up. There's a couple of other improvements that has to do with the pen tablet usage, especially for those that work with a pen display. And this will come in pretty handy for those using the pen to actually invoke the idea of sliding or resizing a particular area within Blender. One other cool feature that is also available with this is deleting materials. So by default, if you simply go over to object, go all the way down to where you've got clean up, you will be able to remove unused material slots. So if we do that, we've got two material slots that have been removed. However, in 4.5, you can actually proceed to delete or remove all the materials that comes with any of the files that you're working with. This can come in very handy if you would like to restart all of the texturing or possibly you just want to have a clear rendering of the 3D model that you're working on. And if you work with the asset browser, there is some very cool stuff happening there. Within the asset browser, you can now change how you like this to display. So if you like it to be displayed horizontally, this is something that you can now do. And this looks pretty interesting. And you can of course go ahead and, you know, increase the columns that you want, increase the preview size. And if this is something that you want to work with, possibly you're into stuff like that, then go for it. There's now an improved spacing of icons and labels in the asset browser. So within the file browser right now, you can now drag and drop in multiple selected files from the file browser into your viewport. Previously, this would allow you bring in only one, but at this point, you can now bring in even more. There's also a tiny update to the timeline editor, and the node editor is having some interesting updates. So some time ago, we talked about the whole improvement to how you get to work with nodes in Blender. So for those who kind of missed that, there's a video about that on the channel. Simply go ahead and check it out. 
So what we have now is pretty simple. If we go over to the shader notes section, we can now simply select any node, tap F on the keyboard and create a frame. So we can just call this node one and press the enter button. We can of course go ahead and select multiple stuff, press F on the keyboard and we can call this shader. And that is how easy it is. And the same thing can also be said for the geometry nodes as well. And I kind of think that the shortcut key, which is F, is way better than the previous shortcut key that was J. And with this, you can make as many nested frames as you want. Something else that you can also do is adding nodes. So you can also click add a node and to any of the frames you like this node to exist, you can simply hover around it and you'd notice that it gets highlighted and we can simply let go and that will exist right there. If we select this node, hold F on the keyboard, we can bring that out, hold down F when you're dragging that, move that to somewhere else, let go, and you can have that in there as well. And for the node groups, there's some interesting update that deals with the fact that panels in node groups can now have toggled input. And this has led up to the idea of having support for expanded enums in the node group interface, which means you can now have menus inside of the node groups and you can use these menus in various use cases. Additionally, there's auto hide input when their usage depends on the menu that is being selected. And I think this is gonna come in very handy for those who are into tool creation or add-on creation. The built-in nodes have also gotten a bit of an overhaul as they've now been modified to look even simpler and more easier to work with. And speaking about nodes you can work with, you can now import multiple external data into geometry nodes by simply dragging and dropping them. And the geometry node tool will definitely create a corresponding node that deals with the importing of that specific data that you're bringing in. Furthermore, Blender 4.5 supports the import of PLY, OBJ, CSV, STL, text file, and also a VDB file. There are now nodes available for these imports, so you can now use them to bring in the files to your geometry nodes. And with 4.5, you can now get that effect of SDF modeling, as there is a set mesh normal node that is now available. And with this node, you can now create smooth transitions between meshes without changing their overall topology. Now here's another interesting feature for geometry nodes that I think a lot of you guys would love. So for example, we go in and we throw in a grid. Let's instance on that grid. And what we're going to instance is a simple cube. So by default, you already have something like this. We'd like to make that five. Maybe we'd like to expand that. We'd like to do all that stuff. This is all fine. But in most cases, you want to have this ready and export them as individual objects to other DCC tools, especially when you make like random stuff or maybe you just want to make one gigantic stuff or maybe convert that to a simple object. This is now super possible because right now, all you need to do is have these things ready and you can go over to your object, go over to where you've got apply and you've got visual geometry to object. And that is going to create these things and convert them to object. Another nice cool feature, which is currently available with this is the error handling. And this now shows you a more visual representation of when you're making the wrong connection. So for example, we'll take the mesh and we connect this to say instance index, for example, you can see the visual indicator that tells you that this is an error. So we can also see that if we do a connection like that. And this makes a lot of sense. This is also available when you're working with zones. So just in case you're creating a zone, maybe you're trying to make a simulation stuff and you do a wrong error connection, this is also visible in that regard. And with this set, there's a couple of interesting stuff that are now available for geometry nodes alongside the user interface that you can go ahead and check out. And of course, for those who are thinking about exploring with the Grease Pencil alongside Geometry Nodes, there are some updates as well that has to do with how you can now take advantage of Geometry Nodes and improve your workflow with Grease Pencil. All of these alongside the camera calling and lots of other cool features that includes updates to the format string nodes and more are now available for you with Blender 4.5. And for the compositor, there's a couple of interesting updates. First off, certain nodes have now been added and this includes the vector math, the vector rotate, vector mix, value mix, clamp, float curve, and black body. All of these nodes were added because they were simply identical to the shading slash geometry node counterpart groups and can be copied from those node trees. There's a new coordinate node that has also been added and this provides various types of pixel coordinates, including normalize and integer pixel coordinates. The texture node which already exists for the geometry nodes and the shader nodes is now supported within the compositor as well. A new relative to pixel node has been added and this is to convert values that are relative to the image size to become pixels. And there are some other interesting nodes that have also been added to this and this includes the denoise node which now supports GPU devices and the backdrop gizmo for box and ellipse mask node has also been added and this can be used to sort of mask setting parts out when working with an image and this is kind of beautiful on its own and this provides you with a couple of handles that you can use to work with those masks how you want them to be there's also a split node that has been added 
and the split node now also ships with a gizmo tool that allows you split through images and you can use the split tool to control the factor of what image you want to see. There's some very interesting things that has to do with an overlay for image and render size and we've got tons of nodes that have also gone through some setting changes and a couple of other nodes that have been removed for functionality and compatibility reasons. And speaking about compatibility reasons, let's actually talk about something that I think you guys need to know about. First off, Blender 4.5 by default has removed support for Intel Mac OS, as this has been deprecated due to high maintenance costs for tracking down and fixing graphic related issues specific to Intel and AMD GPU Macs. There's of course a couple of other deprecation that has also been done, the files that you get to work with 4.5 will be the last release to have a Colada import and export. So if you work with the .dae file, you possibly will not be able to work with that in 5.0. 4.5 will be the last Blender version that will be able to ship with that compatibility option. And moving forward, add-ons that uses built-in shaders should now use the polylines or point shader variants to support metal or Vulcan stuff. And that brings us to talking about Eevee. As right now, Vulkan is now here. Now, Vulkan is the popular backend that is now on par with OpenGL. And the cool thing is with Vulkan, you have a way better performance overall. And before, this was part of an experimental build with previous versions of Blender, but is now available with Blender right now. Actually, it is shipping with Blender 4.5 and hopefully with the final release of 4.5, that would be the default back end. However, if you're working with 4.5 right now, you can simply go over to the edit menu, go all the way to preference and right here where you've got your systems, you can now change the display graphic from OpenGL to Vulkan. And this would require you to restart Blender to implement it. And for sure, this is going to give you a way better performance than what we've got with OpenGL. There's also a couple of limitations for Vulkan, which includes the WOA support, and there's also the low VR performance. And I believe the vast majority of people working with Blender either work on a desktop or a laptop, and not a lot of people actually do VR stuff. So Vulkan is here and it is amazing. And Vulkan comes with support for OpenXR, Subdivision, USD, Hydra, and more. And outside that, which is actually a big update for Eevee, there's a couple of interesting small here and there updates that deals with the Shadow Terminator. And in summary, what this simply does is to avoid too much shadow distortion on surfaces, providing a much more nicer shadow overall on the model. And this is also going to come in very handy if you're working with models that have bumps and all of that stuff. There's also a new set of algorithms that exists right here. There's also a couple of fixes and performance stuff navigation and the GPU based subdivision is now available for both Metal and Vulkan. Compared to what we have with CPU, in terms of GPU, we've got a much more nicer frame per second when working with GPU based subdivision meshes. Cycles also have some nice improvements to it, which includes the adaptive subdivision and this supports the previous missing features that includes attribute subdivision, smooth UV subdivision and also motion blur. There's an improvement to multi-trading and for bump maps, there's now an improved bump correction and this new correction avoids the washing out of areas near the shadow terminator, just like what we explained with that of Eevee. So this now preserves more details for normals and bump maps alike. Outside that, we've got some custom cameras and if you work with AMD, the hip RT is now enabled by default if you're using that GPU. For modeling and UV, there's a couple of nice stuff available for this and this includes the Snap2 Cursor, which now supports rotation. And this is gonna come in pretty handy for some modeling artists. There's also some updates to the curve, the meshes, the point clouds, and of course, the image editor. So within the image editor, you can now show all selected and active object UVs, regardless if you're in the object mode or not. So previously you get to select these and then you jump into your edit mode and you know, you get to work with that. Now you can simply select and you can see that impressively, you can select multiple objects and see all of their UVs in the image editor all at once. And for Blender animation and rigging, there's a couple of nice looking improvements that are also available. And one which I think a lot of people would like is the snapping. So if you always create markers, or maybe you like working with frames, or possibly you like going to exact spots where you've got your keyframes, you will love this one because this now allows you snap to certain paths. So you can now snap to frames, seconds, markers, keyframes and strips. So depending on how you work with the playhead, you can now easily snap to stuff. And you can also toggle on and off the snapping by holding down control on the keyboard while moving the playhead around. Outside that, the Copy Global Transform has a nice update that now supports key insert and some updates are also available for the interface too. And for sculpting and painting, there's just a couple of nice cool updates here. And right now there are some new parameters 
that are available only for those that work with a pen display. So if you work with a pen tablet, there's a tilt support and this allows brushes to be modified based on the angle that you're using the pen. And this tilt support, which now has the tilt factor, is available for the draw brush, the draw sharp brush, the plane and the clay strip. Overall, it said that performance has now been improved when working with Dintopo or multi-resolution modifiers on high vertex mesh counts. We'll actually have to go ahead and test this one out and see what this actually looks like in subsequent videos. However, there are some very nice cool stuff available for sculpt paint and texture and these are pretty cool. The video sequencer is getting a couple of updates, not quite there like most of the other tools, but this is gradually getting there as we're getting some nice improvement that has to do with the overall user interface, how you get to work with it. And we've got a refactor slip operator that is pretty nice for animating your clips and also sliding through your clips as well. And we've also got some other impressive things with how you work with the strips themselves and how you work with the clips right inside the video sequencer. There's some changes and removals that are also available with this one and they are quite nice. The pipeline input output has some interesting updates as well. So for the GLTF, there's some stuff there. FBX got some stuff going for it. OBJ, SVG, image and video files. have got some stuff going for them as well. We did mention earlier that the Colada file is not going to be supported for Blender 5.0 as 4.5 will be the last time we'll be getting that. For those that are into physics, there's just a few updates here that has to do with simulation. And if you work with motion tracking, we've got just two updates right now, which has to do with performance overall. The core has some interesting updates. And for those that work with the Python API, then you've got some cool things going for you right here. So this is it. Tons of things are currently available right now for Blender 4.5. And depending on how you get to work with Blender, you can definitely go ahead, grab this and start checking this one out. Blender 4.5 is officially in beta and this is the right time for you to pick it up and start testing for bugs. 5.0 has just gotten into alpha and there's literally nothing available for this one. But subsequently, when we see some nice, big, cool updates coming to this, we will actually go ahead and share it with you guys and show you guys how it works. And for those that are looking for nice cool projects that are currently happening within the Blender community, there's a good number of projects that are currently happening and they're quite exciting. So if you'd like to check out these ones, then you can simply come through, check them out. This is currently called Storm. Possibly the name will change over time, just like with many other projects, you know, the name just gets changed depending on the direction of the story. And we've got the dog walk that we talked about earlier. So the dog walk itself, like we mentioned, is a game, pretty cool stuff. This is something I like to try myself when it becomes publicly available. At this point, this is behind the paywall, so you can only test this out if you are a Blender Studio subscriber. And of course, if you like to see how these things were made, then you can check out the character regain path and see how this all came together. And folks at Blender Studio just recently announced Singularity, which is one of their new short films that is also in the pipeline. So for those who like to see this one as well, possibly like to check it out, see how the whole storytelling and you know the characters that might be coming to this, all that cute stuff, and how they're currently thinking about getting this done, then all of these are now here. I believe the idea behind this particular one is to stress test Blender 5.0, as that is gonna be a big milestone for the folks at Blender Foundation because you know once we get to a solid number every other thing just becomes update and maintenance you know all of that stuff just like we have with 4.5 and 4.4 so this is it for those who like to take a look at all of these things that we've talked about and potentially you like to find some more interesting nice cool resources I'm gonna link all of those things down in the description so do well to check it out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.